I titled this little talk, The Purpose and the Potential of the Pando Project. And I wasn't, I didn't make any slides for this, but um, Nava mentioned that I was played a role in even the naming of the company. When they first came to me and were telling me about the idea and what they wanted to do, I got so excited because for a long time, I have been in love with something, something called the Pando. And the Pando is a massive grove of aspen trees. And if you've ever seen aspen trees, they're beautiful. They're long, skinny uh, trees with white bark that has kind of a brownish black little, um, like little spots all over it. And then it, it has a, a beautiful head of leaves that are almost round. They look like coins and they change colors all during the year. So they're green in the summer and then in the fall, they're yellow and orange and red and they just shimmer in the wind. And, and then of course they fall off and the, the aspen trees look so gorgeous in the snow without their leaves. They're just these really amazing white you know, trees. I wish I had slides for all of this. I wasn't thinking about the name when I made my slides tonight. Um, but, the, but anyway, the pando, is a particular grove of these trees. And it takes up over 108 acres. That's how massive it is. And they say that it weighs, they're estimating that it weighs over 6 million kilos. Like this massive, massive grove of trees. The interesting thing is it's only one tree. It's only one plant but it has thousands of these trees sticking up out of the ground, but they have one common root system. It's actually just one plant, one massive plant. Now, why am I in love with that? Because in today's world, so many things are moving from massive numbers of individuals to single corporations and and governments and powers and whatnot that hold all the keys. They hold all the power. They get most of the money. I'm sure you've heard about the 1% of, you know, the, the people on earth hold almost 99% of the money. <laughs> like, like they have all the power, they have all the money and they just, they just suck more and more and more and more of that from society. And hey, I'm not opposed to people getting rich. But I, in, in my heart, I wish that wealth and power were more evenly spread in the world. And the thing that I like about Pando is it is kind of like a symbol to me of how thousands of individuals that are joined together in one system can be so massive and so powerful. And so instead of just one entity, it's thousands that are making up one. And so that was always a great symbol for me of joining together to create joint power that could actually compete in the world where power is so consolidated generally. So when they started telling me about the project, I said, oh, you guys, you have to put Pando in the name. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta honor the Pando and, and put Pando in the name because it really, really represents very a, a metaphor for what it is that you're going to create. Because by pulling together and bringing together not just thousands, but millions of people around the world, you can create something that's as big, if not bigger than anything that these single companies that are so huge have created. And so that's actually where the name came from. They liked the idea. And, um, you know, we came up with Pandosoft because it's a software, basically a software platform. And so Pandosoft's name was born. Anyway, I'm very excited about that. I love Pando and I hope you do too. And that's the story behind the name. But tonight I wanted to talk about the purpose and the potential of what we call the Pando Project. And right now the Pando Project is the gathering of as many people as we can before launch um, to, to join together to help form the infrastructure of what is going to become this giant 
streaming platform. So if you look at Pandosoft's mission, vision, and goals, you might have seen this before, the mission is actually to empower millions of people. And the way that that's gonna happen is by disrupting the streaming industry. And I don't know if you know very much about disruption. That's actually one of the things that I specialize in with companies and, and um, industries is disruption. And when you think about disruption, everybody knows what that means. It's like when Uber disrupted the taxi industry or you know when, when Amazon disrupted book selling. So it, it, it kind of just means, you know, somebody did something big and bombastic and they were very successful at it. But that's not really what is happening with disruption. What's happening with disruption is that an idea or a concept when it's executed actually completely shifts the whole way that something is done. And since we're talking about, um, consumer products generally, products and services, it means that the way that a customer, the way that a person used to do something, the way that they're used to getting a need met or used to um, you know, getting entertained or whatever it is that they're doing, gets completely shifted, like, like in ways that maybe people couldn't even predict a year before that. It's like because some technology or some idea made that possible. Like if you just looked at the taxi industry before Uber disrupted it, you, you wouldn't probably have ever predicted Uber. It was only when the technology was available to do this instant connecting of all these people who owned cars and passengers who needed rides, that the idea that somebody could just make an app and it could displace the whole taxi industry worldwide. And, and, and give consumers an entirely different way of getting a ride when they don't have their own car. And so disruption is not just a big successful company. It's, a, it's an idea or a concept that when executed has really shifted how things are actually done. And so Pandosoft is one of the rare companies. There's not that many companies that actually disrupt anything. They pretty much just, you know, try to do the same thing better. But Pandosoft does have the ability to disrupt the streaming industry and to turn people's computers <laughs> into money-making machines in the, in the process. So, so the goal is not really to turn your computer into a money-making machine. That's just a byproduct but it's probably one of the things that you're the most excited about, probably why you're on this call. But the, but the mission of the company fundamentally is to disrupt the streaming industry because that's where the potential and that's where the profit is gonna come from. But in the process, because of the way that they're gonna do it, it gives you the ability to turn your, turn your computer into a money-making machine. The same way that Uber turned your car into a money-making machine. Right. So people can join the fun here and people can join in on the profit here, which is another reason why I'm so excited about it. Then the next thing, the vision, the vision is communities all across the globe coming together and being rewarded for relaying, posting, watching and providing content on a blockchain powered decentralized streaming platform. So we, we envision people all over the world watching videos and other types of um, content on a streaming platform, people in the same community having their computers hooked up to the network in order to help process those videos that those people are watching. So just like that Uber driver is helping with the transportation, the Ramatrons, oh, that was another part about the name. In the Pando, each of those stalks, each of those trees is called a ramet. And so when we're building an electronic version of the Pando, each of the individual nodes are called ramatrons. That's where the, that's where the name came from. But each of these ramatrons in the communities 
will be helping with this streaming. And you'll understand a little bit more about that in a minute, but that's that's what we envision is people in communities being able to, to do things on a video streaming platform that's powered also by people in the community sharing the load and doing some of the processing on their computers, okay? And the goal is to design and develop and deploy decentralized video streaming using a blockchain-based peer-to-peer Where's my last word? It's not coming. There it is. Delivery network. Okay. So what does that mean? That's a lot of fancy words, but let's break this down here. Basically, the decentralization is a critical piece of all of this. Just like all of those individual trees in the pando, the processing of this video streaming platform, this is this delivery network that delivers the streaming is not one company with one building or even a hundred buildings spread across the globe. It's actually millions of little computers connected together and doing a little bit of the work. And normally you would never be able to do that. I mean, technology had to advance to the stage that it's at today. And a particular technology called blockchain had to be invented before something like this would even be possible. And so there's actually two different ways that we are sort of decentralizing and, and putting people together. One is in the actual physical um, streaming itself is, is a network of computers that are connected together. Their activity is recorded on the blockchain. And blockchain in and of itself is a technology that creates a ledger, a, a report, a reporting system that cannot be altered. That's the key here. It's secure and it's, and it's much, much, much more efficient than things that need lots of levels of management and there's all kinds of room for error and people who are corrupt could just change things, you know, hackers could steal things. But with the blockchain, you have a ledger that is immutable. It's, it's non-fungal. <laughs> it cannot be changed by anyone. And that allows you to do so many things so much more easily and securely and quickly and solidly than anything else. So with it, we can decentralize the video streaming and we can record and utilize everything on the blockchain to make it that much more efficient and secure and so forth. So it's all peer to peer and it's all blockchain based. And the whole delivery network of all these videos is going to be sitting on that. Okay. So that's what we're talking about here. And, the, and a critical concept, why this is going to be so powerful is that you probably have experienced as you try to view videos, even, even here on Zoom, you've probably had Zoom freeze, right? That's because the, the, the content is getting stuck. A lot of the videos that were played before we started use the word lag. It's like it's lagging, it's sluggish, it's slow. It's like, uh, it's not working, right? The reason for that is because you have the content creators of whatever video going through platforms, which in the traditional model at the top, go through centralized data networks centralized companies and they try to um you know like manage the load you know divide the bandwidth and as they serve it to the viewers and like for example here in the united states my internet company i know that they deliberately let the value of my streaming go down and down and down and down and down until i complain if i make a phone call like if my, if my internet was lagging tonight, I could make a phone call tomorrow and magically somehow they, they, they say, we don't see any problem, but just because I made the call, suddenly my internet will be streaming along smoothly again for a while. And then it'll start to get worse and worse and worse and worse until I make a call. And as soon as I call and complain, it's back 
blazing again. Why? Because they are distributing the loads according to who complains the most or, or who they think needs it the most or whatever, right? I mean, the, they're constantly having to make uh, decisions about how much to give to whom and what. And, and then, of course, you have all kinds of other possibilities of how the lag can happen along the way when something's coming from a centralized location. What Pandosoft is doing is building a video platform that is where the delivery moves through these million ramatrons. And so it's more localized. So in my neighborhood, there would be ramatrons around me and because they're close and they're all within my area, my chances of having low lag go down dramatically. Now you might be thinking, as I did, of course, when they were telling me about this, that, wait a second, what if there's no Ramatrons in my area yet? Is my, is my streaming going to be bad? Well, until the Ramatron load is, is covered by actual Ramatrons, Pandosoft will use centralized data networks, just like anybody else does, in order to serve up the videos. But once the Ramatron load is spread, then that won't be necessary and the quality will be that much better because the chances for lag go down dramatically. There, there's so much more to spread the load among that you're not gonna have the lag time that you have with the centralized one. So the viewers are gonna be much happier, okay? So that's kind of the, the story of the product of Pandosoft. But why, why do I, as a business consultant, see great potential in Pandosoft? Well, the way you make a lot of money and grow really big and you know, become very, very successful is to solve problems. People don't buy stuff or services, people buy solutions to problems. Even if their problem is that they're bored and they wanna buy something exciting, it's still solving a problem. People pay for solutions to problems. That's where money comes from. So it's really important that a company that you're betting on solves a lot of problems or one problem really, really, really well, or both. And I think Pandosoft has the potential to actually do both. So for example, it has the potential to offer seamless streaming for all, not just people in particular cities with, you know, that are close to the centralized network or something, but localized decentralized Ramatron technology will even be able to solve the last mile delivery issues, the lag that happens the further away you get from the central server, right? And it's able to provide seamless streaming to every corner of the world. That's the goal. That's the vision. So that's a huge problem solved. That's, that's a major thing. If, if that can be solved, that's worth a lot of money. Okay. And it will be very, very popular. The second one, using blockchain and peer-to-peer -peer technology, Pandosoft has the potential to reduce the cost of delivering and handling data. I'm sure you're familiar with the term, uh, eliminate the middleman. <laughs> There's lots of middlemen eliminated here because you're pretty much just going right from the Ramatron's to the customers. There's really not a whole lot of other middlemen involved. And that's while delivering higher streaming quality with higher security and integrity. I mean, that's a lot right there in that box. I mean, to reduce the cost of delivering and handling the data, you know what that means. If you reduce costs, you increase profits. And you'll see later on that everybody gets to share in these profits. So that's even better that there's lots more of it, right? And then delivering higher streaming to deliver higher quality at lower cost is always a winning proposition for a business. If you can deliver higher quality at lower cost, you're going to succeed. And then when you add security and integrity, which kind of gets into the whole blockchain thing, but man, we are in a world where so much is insecure and there's so little integrity in the way that so many things are run. 
I, I could go all night on that one, but I won't. I think I'm sure you all know what I, the kinds of things that I'm talking about. And so the fact that we can do that is really, really phenomenal. That's a, that's a problem lots of people will be willing to pay to have solved. Um, and then the content providers, people who actually make content that they want to deliver online, there's actually two different types of them. Content creators who are like influencers or gamers or you know, um, talent, people with talents or anything like that. People who want to teach, people who want to sing, people who want to do anything online, they're going to have more power, freedom, control, and profit using Pandosoft channels. You are putting their channels on the Pandosoft platform. Why? Because it's not a centralized company that's going to control everything they do, uh, unplug it whenever they want, uh, you know, invade it whenever they want, put other people's advertising on it, etc. When you work with big platforms like YouTube, um, or even Vimeo now is doing a lot of it, and there's lots of other platforms up there, they control it. And so, you know, if they want to cancel you tomorrow, you're canceled. If they want to take more profit, they will. If they want to cut off profit altogether, they will. They can do whatever they want because they control it. And usually the way they control it gives them a lot of profit that a lot of content creators would probably rather keep. And so the way that Pandosoft is going to set up at least its own apps on the platform is going to allow the content creators to control their own pricing, to control their own fans, to, to determine their own profits and all these kinds of things. And so, you know, Pandosoft will be making a very small amount of money in very fair little ways, but nothing like the kind of control and gouging that most platforms offer. So they're really gonna be popular <laughs> with people who want to create audiences and try to make money off of their online content. Pandosoft is setting up a much better alternative for them. The second thing is content creators who are actually app developers. Like if you actually wanted to set up your own YouTube or if you wanted to set up you know, any kind of a platform yourself, the Pandosoft technology platform can actually host other platforms and other apps, anybody who wants to do anything on a blockchain based video streaming platform would be welcome to come and just tap on to the Pandosoft infrastructure. So developers will be able to enjoy popular, stable, secure platform that has its own ecosystem. And I'm sure you're probably going to, you either have watched or you're going to watch lots more videos about the Pandosoft ecosystem. But just suffice it to say right now that you can take or leave as much of, as you want, if you're a developer, of the fact that the, the system has people who are Ramitrons, who are very, very invested in lots of bandwidth being used, and they're also users, they're viewers, they're probably also content providers, they're very engaged. And then you have a whole you know, bunch of content creators who are already existing in the Pando ecosystem. You have viewers who are existing in the Pando ecosystem. And because it's based on the blockchain, it's easy for Pandosoft to actually have its own token, which is you know, not, not, not like Bitcoin where you're probably gonna be going out and spending it on you know buying a house or something, but you can you can earn it and spend it within the 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 isolated ecosystem within within Pandosoft, and then you can take them and exchange them for fiat money, like your own country's currency or something, to use outside. But within the ecosystem, it actually has you know payment gateways and ways that people can spend and earn, and and the fact that it's internally in an ecosystem offers all kinds of other advantages that I won't get into here. But this is, this is solving some really, really major problems that are out there in the world. 
And then last but not least is the problem solved that you're probably the most interested in here on this call tonight, which is that people, just ordinary people that just happen to own a computer can earn by the minute. And, you know, people are excited about earning monthly. They're excited about earning weekly. Some people get to earn daily. How many people get to earn by the minute? <laughs> but that's not really a, a problem or a solution. It's just kind of interesting. But the solution is that people will be able to earn money. People all over the world, from every nook and cranny of the world, anyone who has a computer that wants to be a Ramatron can download the software, turn it on, stake some tokens so you have proof of stake, and turn your machine on whenever you want. So you can go on and off the platform, just like Uber drivers can go on or off the platform. They can say, I'm ready to take passengers, or they can say, hey, I'm taking my family out for lunch. I'm not available for, for you know, customers. You can say, hey, I'm, I'm gaming right now. I don't want to share my bandwidth. Or you could say, I'm watching movies. The, the cool thing about the Ramatron software is it's not going to take any bandwidth that you actually are using. So if you are streaming videos or if you're doing, you know, extensive calculations in Excel sheets or you're creating artwork in, you know, heavy data driven programs or something, even if you have your Ramatron turned on, the software is not going to take bandwidth away from you. But you have paid for bandwidth from your provider. I don't know about you, but I pay for a, a lot of bandwidth that I know I don't use, partially because they don't even give it to me. But, you know, they, but they say that I'm paying for this much bandwidth every month when I pay my internet bill. And I should be able to use that much bandwidth for whatever I want. And so I can use the part that I need and then I can donate the rest of it to Pandosoft because I paid for that bandwidth from my provider. So I might as well get some value out of it by giving any excess bandwidth to the Pandosoft network so that it can be used to do all these little minor, these minute calculations and, and processing work that needs to be done to stream videos. Because videos, you know, obviously can't physically travel through space. They're not some physical thing traveling through space from one place and landing in your computer. They're bits of data. And, you know, whatever format it was in when somebody uploaded it, it needs to be broken down into all the bits to travel through the internet, down different pathways. It needs to regroup together to, to be able to play in your machine. And it has to be able to play in some format that your machine wants to receive. So all of that delivery and all of that processing is done with this network of Ramatrons using bandwidth that they paid for but don't need. Are you excited yet? I mean, this is just such a brilliant idea. I, I'm very, I love this idea. Okay. And now let me just talk about blockchain just for a minute. I mean, I'm sure you've heard lots and lots and lots and lots about the blockchain. I'm certainly not going to explain how it works. You, you've got lots of, uh, lots of presentations to show you that. But what I wanted to say about it is that it's such an important thing right now because this world is gone insane. I mean, it seems like every country is just suffering from corruption and theft and hacking and power plays and people are living in fear. I mean, there's just so much fear about how power and control are happening right now. And blockchain is one of the ways that things can be locked down in an immutable way and you can count on it. It's, it's just a ledger, but it's amazing how many times having a ledger of what actually happened and what's actually true and how much you actually earned, et cetera, and have it not be um, subject to you know, corrupt people. I mean, as I said in the beginning, I think that the leaders of Pandosoft are ethical. You know, these are people that I've actually known for a long time and that I trust tremendously. I think they have all the ethics in the world, but you don't know that. <laughs> 
And the millions and millions of people don't know that. And why should they even have to trust that? The blockchain makes everybody be able to depend on equality and integrity and transparency and efficiency. And so this is really an idea whose time has come and blockchain is a technology that's really helping to make this happen. So blockchain is becoming important day by day. In the year 2009, blockchain emerged as Bitcoin. That's probably how most of us um, first heard of the blockchain. But now blockchain has actually become a mainstream technology. I don't know if you realize this, but it's not just about Bitcoin or Ethereum or tokens or money. It's actually being used now in industries, healthcare, technology, supply chains, logistics, education, many other technology fields. Any field that can benefit from an immutable ledger is using blockchain today. This is such a powerful technology. It was designed and developed to immutably log and track transparent processes. So everybody can see it and it can't be changed. That's what you get with the blockchain. And this makes it highly useful for platforms that require integrity, transparency, privacy, and security. That's why we're using it. Because this whole, if you're going to get all these people working together, you want to make sure that it's all working the way that everybody believes it's working, right? You, you can't, you, we don't want any shenanigans and that's not possible here. So then uh, what are we going to do with this infrastructure and where's all this bandwidth going to get used, right? That's one of the questions I was always asking these guys. It's like, well, you can get all these Ravitrons together, but how are you going to get all of the bandwidth to be used for anything? And, you know, they, they, they came up with four apps that their team is actually going to create. Um, one of them's already in testing, which is the Pan Pandojo. But Pandogo and Show Us and TutorX are all coming on the, on the heels. And these are just four apps, okay? I think that the, each of these apps has phenomenal potential for success. And these four apps will be the first apps on the Pando blockchain infrastructure. And so, you know, I'm sure, again, you've seen presentations on this, but, but basically Pandojo is a platform kind of like Twitch, where probably most of the content creators are going to be gamers and people who want to do shows that have a lot of fans who want to watch what they're doing. And it's going to be a platform like that, but it's sitting on this Pandosoft blockchain infrastructure. So it's going to be more fair to the content creators and better streaming for the viewers and overall better for everyone. So it's going to be a great replacement for a lot of people. Pandogo is more of kind of like a little mini YouTube. <laughs> now, I, I think YouTube is maybe too big there, but it's a, it's a localized um, viewing of events, concerts, weddings, shows, movies, you know, indie movies. It, it's kind of a way for people to utilize video yeah, streaming to showcase um, movies and events and, and to be able to earn money from them. And so that is going to um, also be a fantastic, we have somebody, uh, we got to, Nava, mute yourself. <laughs> we have background noise. Um, and then we have uh, TutorX. And TutorX is amazing. It, it, the way that it is designed right now, the way they have envisioned it, it's going to be kind of like Zoom, kind of like what we're talking on now, but with so much more available. Um, the pandemic really brought out the need for something like this because suddenly people couldn't meet in person. They want to meet online. Teachers need to teach online. And so the need for plat a platform which can not only allow the teacher to teach, but can very nicely organize and um, showcase and serve up and allow access to all kinds of you know archived videos and all kinds of background notes and you know 
homework assignments and whatever else you want to put in there, but all kinds of documents and things can all be organized and, and served up to the people in the platform, the students, if you will. And then it also has all kinds of fancy things like cameras from all different angles instead of just one boring view. And more interestingly is the fact that you can do free things and then you can do things for pay or for money. So I, I don't think it's actually going to be called Tutor X by the time they actually launch it, because I think that name is maybe not even available. I don't know. But um, but we were thinking of tutors when we were kind of thinking of the whole thing, because tutors need to do some things for free. You know, they might have to teach their class for free or something, but then they want to earn money doing tutoring. Or you might have somebody who's like a speaker and they want to do free webinars, but then they also want to offer courses for pay. Well, this is like an all-in-one platform that will allow people to do both. So there's parts that can be free, there's parts that can be for pay. It includes the payment gateway and the platform all built on blockchain. I mean, it's almost like another little ecosystem of its own. And I think it's something that's gonna be quite popular. I know that um, Nava and team have been talking to a lot of universities and people like that who have great interest in this particular project. And honestly, I'm going to admit my favorite is Show Us. And again, that's probably not going to be the final name, but the app, the idea, and, and the reason why this is my favorite is because I don't think there's anything like it in existence yet. And I think that this is something that will fill a really important need. And so I kind of envision it as a cross between TikTok and LinkedIn. And the idea would be that just like when you want to see if somebody is a potential partner for you, if you're in business and whatnot, you usually look up their LinkedIn profile and LinkedIn can kind of showcase who you are and what you've done and what your credentials are and that sort of thing. And, and everybody knows the universal place where you look somebody up is on LinkedIn. Well, TikTok is a little bit more of a wild, wild west. And you see these very short little videos but it's a way for people to really showcase themselves, um, I guess, for entertainment, entertainment value. But what if there was an app where people would know, just like they know you got to go to LinkedIn or, or you can go to LinkedIn to see somebody's credentials. What if you knew that you could go to show us to see somebody's showcase video? And it just becomes the place where everybody goes to see the, I'm going to say TikTok video, because it's probably going to be rather short, but you're going to see a video. We're not talking about a training or a course or a webinar or anything like that, but the video that's kind of like somebody at a job interview or somebody trying to sell you on their services. So if I want to hire an employee, I can look up their LinkedIn, I can look at their resume, I can go to show us and I can see them talking and telling me what their talents are and what they think their greatest skill set is and what they think that why they think why I should hire them. It's like the sales pitch for talent. And so I can't imagine why every employer would not pretty much require everybody to have a show us video. I mean, along with everything else, or even if it can't be required, maybe some countries wouldn't make that legal. It would just become the expectation, kind of like LinkedIn. You don't have to have a LinkedIn profile, but people will think you're weird if you don't. So the thing would be, why aren't you showing us? <laughs> what are you hiding if you don't have a show us that I can go look at? But looking at the show us will give people, it brings the resume to life. It brings the talent to life and lets you really get a sense of this person, not just look at a flat piece of paper or a screen, right? And even things like my local uh, businesses, if I want to decide if I want to, you know, frequent your bakery and it just newly opened up and I've been going to a different bakery for all these years, I want to see the show us video of that new bakery. I want to see what the owners have to say about why they're in business. I want people telling their purpose and showcasing their talents on video in one place. And I think that that's what show us can be. And I think that Pandosoft is the only one even working on it. So that's one of the reasons why that's my favorite because it's exclusive. Um, but it's really important to recognize that because one of the things 
<laughs> one of the things that I get, give these guys a hard time about, um, Nava mentioned that I'm, um, I'm always kind of like, I don't, I don't pull any punches. They're probably amazed. They're probably going to watch this video many times. And all the employees of Pandosoft are probably going to say, wow, I didn't realize that boss Gene actually thought we had a chance <laughs> because, because usually when I'm talking to them, I'm telling them all of the obstacles they're going to face, like, like with Tutor X, you know, can you imagine the customer service? nightmare that you're going to have on your hands with that and you know they're going to have to be ready they're going to have to build something that's robust enough to support people in massive customer service kind of ways when they do tutor x and and so those are the kinds of things i'm bringing up are the obstacles that are going to need to be overcome to success and i think that um tutor x and pandojo and pandogo all have competition and that's one of the obstacles I think we have some advantages, but there's definitely competition. Show us is exclusive. And so that's why it's my favorite. Anyway, but besides, even if all four of the Pandosoft apps were just absolute failures, <laughs> you know, as long as they're churning up enough bandwidth to begin with to really get the thing going, it's not even going to matter. Those four apps are just minuscule in comparison to the fact that the infrastructure will be open and, and be able to be used by any developer with any app or even a platform. And, and so there's going to be more users, there's going to be more bandwidth used, which means there's going to be more payments to Ramatrons as the word gets out and people realize that they would rather put their work, their, their platform or their app on such a secure decentralized infrastructure than the other options that are out there for hosting so it's kind of like the pandosoft infrastructure becomes a host to anybody's app which which makes much 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 more potential for bandwidth to go through the ramatron network okay so lots more coming now i want to talk about a couple of things um before we go, and that is something called network effect. Um, a lot of the people that I work with analyze the potential of businesses based on several criteria. And the creme de la creme, the criteria that if you can meet it, people, investors will, will flock to you and people will, will bet on you and your chances for success are extraordinary and that's this prized thing called the network effect and most you know businesses built by mere mortals don't even have anything that would have any potential to have network effect they just have to build their business the normal way and they can only grow in a kind of a linear fashion but a network effect is as defined by Wikipedia, the network effect is a phenomenon whereby increased numbers of people or participants improve the value of a product or service. Now, let me lay this out a little bit more. It's actually like what was done with Airbnb, Uber, Amazon, eBay, and many, many more. But one thing I think you'll notice about these companies is they're massive they're very successful they took over the territory big time in what they were doing and the reason that they are so big and so successful is because they created a network effect so let me explain how this works first of all you set up something that will basically have customers bringing in more customers i mean people are going to talk to other people about it and sometimes you're setting something up where people even need the other people to get on there for some reason like some people will actually say well you have to download this and or you have to get an account on this or you have to do that people will not only tell people about it but they'll force them to get on it so they can do business with them okay that's i don't think that these four necessarily have that but lots of the companies that have network effect have something where customers are telling other customers that they have to get the thing in order for the customers to, to play together. Like fax machines, 
in the old days uh, that didn't really have network effect but it had this effect where if you had a fax machine it wasn't any good to you if somebody else didn't have one <laughs> right i mean everybody has to have one or who cares if anybody has one right so customers have the way or have a reason or or want to bring in more customers that's one factor another factor is customer numbers then bring in more vendors so amazon is a really good example of that even if somebody wants to sell their goods on their own website they know that even giving amazon 30 percent they're going to make a lot more money if they can also get that product listed on amazon why because amazon has all the customers all the customers are on Amazon and all the customers already trust Amazon. It's like me and Amazon. I don't care what you tell me about Amazon. Nobody else will get this thing to my door tomorrow. Amazon's giving me a good price. Amazon backs everything up with their stellar customer service and they get it to me tomorrow because I pay one fee for the year for Amazon Prime. So I am a solid Amazon customer. Somebody is not gonna very easily get my business away from Amazon. So if you're a vendor, I'm probably not gonna buy your thing. I'm gonna buy somebody else's thing who's selling it on Amazon because I wanna shop on Amazon. So the vendors now have no choice but to list on Amazon. Even companies like Nike, that held out for years, they did not sell their products on Amazon, ultimately had to because the customers are there. Customers look on Amazon first before they look anywhere else. Customers don't want to order from lots and lots and lots of websites. Customers don't want to have to fill in their address and all that all the time. Customers don't want to have to put their payment details in. Customers like having everything in one place. So if the vendor wants to sell, they better get on Amazon. So the customer numbers bring in more vendors, more and more and more and more. More customers bring in more customers, more customers bring in more vendors. Vendors bring in more customers and more vendors. <laughs> and, and, and the growth that happens because of this creates what is known in the business industry as a moat, a moat around the company's castle and a moat is what you want to have if you want to succeed and skyrocket past all your competitors because the network effect is an almost insurmountable competitive advantage and its existence creates a huge barrier to entry for newcomers that's what happens with the network effect somebody cannot replace amazon tomorrow doesn't matter how hard they try doesn't matter how much money they have Amazon already got the customers who brought in the more customers that brought in the vendors who brought in more customers who brought in more vendors and everybody is locked in there voluntarily. That's the network effect. So the magic unicorn companies that skyrocket and succeed like crazy out there from Silicon Valley and whatnot generally have the network effect and average businesses don't have any way to create that. I mean, think about your own business, if you have a business, does it have this ability? Generally not. It has to be some kind of a platform that connects people, vendors and buyers. And you, do, you usually don't even have to have any real estate. Airbnb does not own a single piece of real estate. And yet it sells more hotel rooms than all of the hotel chains. Uber doesn't own any cars. Amazon doesn't own any products. Well, now they later on, they started making some, but in general, they didn't own anything. They just hooked everybody together. Same thing with eBay. That's where the money is in today's technological world. This is the best kind of company for massive success. And Pandosoft has this in spades in many ways, in many different places. So it's a very, very exciting company. And this is just kind of an overview. You know, it's a platform. It's not just a product or service or an app. It's an actual platform. And beyond a platform, it's an ecosystem. And the platform and the ecosystem are built on blockchain and it has the network effect. So this is like amazing. 
And uh, yes, it's huge. Yes, it's bombastic. Yes, it looks like a massive vision. But guess what? This isn't about just one little company doing this big thing. This is about everybody, all of us, all of you, all the communities everywhere as they join in, as they pitch in, as they participate in whatever way, as a viewer, as a content creator, as a Ramatron, it's building this together. We're a pando, not one company trying to become a giant, right? And it also utilizes green technology. It's powered by community. It can process over a thousand transactions per second. There's an open door for app developers which, as I said, is going to give more bandwidth, which is going to pay more Ramatrons. It uses a combination of blockchain protocols. All of these I won't name. Um, NFT. I don't know if you're following the whole NFT, the non-fungal um, token, but basically what this is about, and it's really just budding now, is this whole world where value can be created and locked in. And and it could never happen before. There was never the technology to do this. But take something like a painting that there's only one original that the artist did. No matter how many copies, you know, actual art copies are made and sold, that original is still going to be worth so much more. And then you could even take the artwork and turn it into really cheap postcards. And still, the original would be worth all this money. Well, that's easy when there's just one physical thing because it's only one, it can't be duplicated. It's a one of a kind, right? You can make copies, but you can't duplicate the original. Well, that was never available in the digital world. You could come up with a digital piece of art or a digital song or even a really cool meme or something, but something that's made of, of data. How could you ever protect the uniqueness and the originality of it. Well, now with NFT, with non-fungal tokens built on a blockchain, you have the ability to certify on the public record that cannot be changed and can be verified by every single person that looks at it. You have the ability to say, this is the original video, or this is the original digital artwork. Actually, it's not the actual artwork, it's the ledger, it's the documentation, it's the certificate of the fact that you own the one and only original. And so even though there could be millions of copies all over the place, your original could still be worth a lot of money. They sold uh, Jack Dorsey's first tweet. Jack Dorsey is one of the founders of Twitter and his first tweet sold as an NFT for $2.5 million. <laughs> so somebody owns the original of Jack Dorsey's tweets and it was worth 2.5 million. But that wouldn't even be possible if you didn't have a blockchain that had an immutable ledger. And so this thing, this, this making things valuable and one of a kind as validated by the entire world um, is just starting and the, the Pandosoft blockchain infrastructure will be able to support those. So, you know, there's a whole nother field of stuff that will come in and need bandwidth and utilize that Ramatron um, delivery system. And of course, it has its own wallet because the Pandosoft token needs to be exchanged. So the whole thing with a wallet and the ability to pay each other and exchange and give and take and move, is going to be very, very simple. And it can all stay within the Pandosoft ecosystem until you want to take some of it and exchange it for money, which you can do at any time. But so that's kind of an overview. And I think it gives you a pretty good idea of why I think this is such an amazing business idea. Um, and really, if you look at the kind of industries that we're actually touching here. We're, we're, we're touching the video streaming industry, 842 billion. We're touching the esports industry with Pandogo or Pandojo, 6.8 billion. Live streaming industry, 247 billion with Pandogo. The job industry, 43 billion went with the Show Us app. The education industry, 377 billion with TutorX. And the film industry, 114 billion 
with kind of all of it, but especially Pandogo, the video gaming industry, 256 billion with Pandojo, advertising industry, 982 billion. And that one we haven't really talked about, but I'm sure you probably know. And if you don't, I'm telling you, Facebook is an advertising platform. I mean, everybody uses it, all the people use it to stay connected with friends and family and strangers that have common interests and, and to discuss and to share and to play around and, and basically just commune with one another. But by building that community playground, Facebook got two very, very valuable assets. One is the ability to sell eyeballs by telling advertisers, hey, I got all the people. You wanna get in front of the people? Come pay me. So they're an advertising platform. That's how they make their money. But the other thing that they got was all the data on all those users. They actually, you know, if you're scrolling through Facebook, Facebook is calculating how long you paused when you're scrolling through. So it sees what is of interest to you. And it notices, I mean, it's not spying on you personally, but robots are kind of keeping track and, and it can figure out which side you're on politically. If you post a lot, it can figure out whether you're usually in a good mood or a bad mood based on which kind of emojis you use and what kind of things you comment on. And it can start to see what kinds of things you click on to buy, what kinds of things you click on to read. And it gathers all that data and then delivers a beautiful solution to advertisers by allowing them to very, very specifically target people who are likely to like what they see. And to the user, to me, I appreciate that because I don't really mind that every once in a while as I'm scrolling, I'm not looking at something a friend put up, but I'm looking at something that an advertiser put there, but it's always relevant to me. And so I don't really mind. In fact, I probably buy too much stuff off of Facebook because it's relevant. I, it's, it's like it's suited for me. It's perfect for me. I would be pretty annoyed if I was seeing advertisements for, you know, big trucks or, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, stuff is completely irrelevant to me. Tools and, you know, like who knows, but stuff that I don't want to see, I have no interest in, you know, like I'm, I'm long past my, uh, prime of raising children. I've already raised way too many children. I'm not interested in diapers, for example. So I don't want to see an ad for that. Well, Facebook will never show me one because I have never indicated that I'm interested in these such thing. So it's good for the advertisers because they can spend a lot less money getting in front of exactly the right customer. And it's good for the users because they're not bothered with stuff that doesn't even interest them. So that's the kind of thing that platforms with users doing stuff can offer to advertisers. And so we have that potential, you know, as this thing grows, there's going to be lots of potential for very unannoying advertising to happen in, you know, places where it works similar to the way Facebook works. So in the advertising industry, $982 billion. So look at all these industries and how much money is flowing through them. Even if we just tapped a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of some of this, it's still going to be a mega, mega, mega successful company. So I like that. I love this movie. Limitless. Everything is possible when you open your mind. This is, this is how I feel about the trajectory and the possibility of Pandosoft, because if they play their cards right, and if you all help out, if everybody joins in and, and you know, it's like not, it's not very much sweat off of anybody's back. You know, it's not like, it's not like the company's going around and, and people are investing millions of dollars or something. People are, you know, buying very inexpensive Ramatrons to participate in the money-making side. And most of the people are participating for free. So as the people are joining in and being part of this, I really do think that it has limitless potential for growth. So the thing that excites me the most is that the Pando Project really, truly, not just like a slogan, it really is for the community and it really is by the community. 
And I think that businesses that can do that are the way of the future and the one, the kind of businesses that will be the most beloved by consumers as we move forward. Because as the super elite, the 1% take more and more, people are getting more and more sick of it. And anything they can do to join the revolution, to band together, to do productive things together, to serve one another together and profit together, the more that they're going to join in.